Hey guys, so we decided to start it off with just like a question by question basis for TikTok. And the first question we got is how do we handle each other's pet peeves? She's got no pet peeves in me. Anyways, nope. everything is about compromise. You know what I mean? Like you put God in the middle and then you got us on both sides and you just like make love the middle ground mm -hmm. and you just work towards that goal, wouldn't yeah, you say? Absolutely. I think it makes it easy to handle the pet peeves when you really love the person you're with and it makes it easy to put up with them and deal with those pet peeves and you know, your you focus fo yes it's all about focus you find focus ways to on figure the it good, out good and the good will get mm -hmm. better focus on the bad and the bad will get worse so everything is about your perspective you have the power to choose what you're going to focus on yeah the next question is from abby we love you too girl Woo! what are your love languages and how do they mesh slash clash She's got every love language, so I do. I for do. any man out there, Stop. whose woman has every love language. I am a needy lover. I'm like, tell me, I look pretty. She I'm like, I love gifts. Give me love. Give me words of affirmation, and I love quality time. And I think that we mesh pretty well because you're really easy to please. I feel like you just need just some words of affirmation. Yeah. He makes me a steak, and I'm like, Hercules, Hercules, that's my. Because they are the best steaks. I'm like, and look she at does, his muscles. She means it. Look at those muscles she while he's making that it. steak. It tastes so good. So, I mean, they don't clash that much because mm -hmm. as long as I just tell him that he's killing it and he's and, bringing the juice. And she is, she, <laughs> she might have every love language, but it's very easy to, to satisfy those love languages because yeah, she's, she's so very easy going. You, yeah, and you make it easy. I love you very much. I love so, you. we don't clash that much as far as like that, you know. Next question. What is the hardest thing about being married? And I'd have to say for me. You answered a little too quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just coexisting with your spouse. You know, you're so used to living your life a certain type of way, you know, being single and, you know, not married and everything. And then you get married and you have the responsibility of another person. And, you know, you need to satisfy their needs as well as your own. And, you know, their stuff becomes your priority. So it's just learning how to navigate that and, you know, I think it, it, it becomes pretty easy, like I said, when you really love the person, you're willing to make sacrifices and do that kind of stuff. For me, um, the hardest part about marriage was when I would tell him some things, I feel like as a man, sometimes it was hard for him to hear me. And so I yeah. felt like in order for him to Very understand headed. what I was saying, I was like screaming like a mad woman. And I didn't like the person I was becoming when I like I said, with just trying to get him to understand me, I felt like I was just like becoming this mad woman and screaming at him because I felt like he wasn't listening to me. And then I realized it's also about understanding the way that your spouse communicates, you know? And so sometimes I feel like with my husband, if I've told him something over and over and over again and he's not listening, you know, sometimes you got to switch it up a little bit and just become completely silent, you know, like... It's one Silence of those things. Never a good thing. No, it's not because I'm like I said what I said, and I'm not seeing <laughs> it happening. And so you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna let it be, and I'm gonna give it over to God. And that's when sometimes we see like, you know, the bigger results. So it's also understanding on what's the best way to communicate with each other. And you know, for Paul, when he tells me something, and when he tells me, I'm like, okay, like I'm so sorry. I'm gonna do better. You know, but you know how men are sometimes. That pride, honey. <laughs> So the next question is, what's something you wish you knew about marriage that you didn't know? Mm, that is a good, 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 good question. I think for me, and I'm sure Meryl will agree with this, is that, um, you know, I think it's so important to be aligned with your partner and to really be on one accord with them. And for me, I know that took some time and it's still, you know, a work in progress. You know, it's never going to be perfect, but... I try every day to wake up and, you know, be on one accord with her and, you know, when problems arise or stuff arises to just know that we can have each other's back and agree with it. Yeah, I mean, that's the truth. Because you got to think too, Paul and I, we got married a little bit later on in life. So I was 28 when we got married. Mm -hmm. And so 28 years of our lives, like we were single people making our own choices and our own decisions. No, I was 28. You were 27. Well, okay. Well, I was 27. And so prior to this, so yeah, prior to this, um, before Paul and I got married, 
you know, I was living with my best friend, Witwit, and living we were just like, Still you know, we up. just bounced the ideas off of each other. I'm like, girl, what you think I should do about this? She would say yes, and I'm like, okay, cool, let's go. And so whenever we got married, we had to completely change the way that we thought because it went from like me making my own decisions and then checking with my best friend and my mom about it and being like, okay, that's cool. And then when I got married, I was like, oh, like, I gotta check with my husband. You know what I mean? Like, I do believe, like, you know what I mean? He's a leader of my household. So, like, now I gotta, like, you know, listen to see what my husband believes in this. And it was just really hard tough. for me to understand so the tough. waves of that. Shut up. But no, it really is. Like, just getting into alignment in the first couple of years. It's just, it's difficult, mm -hmm. you know? But we're working on it. So we're going to take a break from questions and we're definitely going to get to some of the questions from Instagram and the other questions tomorrow, but we wanted to stop and kind of focus on the love dare. Um, we said that we're going to kind of give you guys a synopsis of each chapter and the first chapter is love is patient. That's a big thing. Um, and so in the beginning it says be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. And one of the um, highlighted parts that we thought were really important was it says, help me to understand instead of how dare you. So when you're patient with your spouse, it means you're giving your spouse the permission to be human and understanding that everyone has faults, you know? And so it's really giving your husband the same grace that God gives us every single day. Or, or your, your wife. wife yeah. You saw how I did that. God, I'm <laughs> my selfish. <laughs> Oh, man. You know what I'm And so um, with the love is patience, it's also just talking about just fostering an environment that's peaceful and it is quiet, you know, because it, let's be honest, sometimes we're not the most patient with each other. Not always the case in marriages. No. I, I know for myself, I I get pretty impatient pretty quick with a lot of things and it's something I've been working on and it helps when you got a spouse that is awesome with it and you know I feel like Meryl is very patient and something that she helps me with so thank you and he's actually really really good with it too like don't fool you he's a sweetheart so the first part of the dare is communication so although love is communicated a number of ways our words often reflect the condition of our hearts so for the next day resolve to demonstrate patience and to say nothing. So the first dare for this week for you couples and us is resolve to demonstrate patience and to say nothing negative to your spouse at all. If the temptation arises, choose to not say anything at all. Swallow it. It's better to hold your tongue than to say something you'll regret. So whenever you have a disapproving thought of your spouse, Zip it. <laughs> Not always the easiest thing to do. We all know that. And so but that's the first day. And let us know how you guys are coming along, your challenges, and if you guys want to talk about anything else. But thank you for tuning in, and it's been a lot of fun. Swan talk. Woo!